Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Sarah and I'm so happy to have you here with me today where we are going to learn all about some really incredible bats. And I don't just mean any bats. I mean the biggest bats in the world that have some incredibly important jobs in their environment. So without further ado, let's begin. Today we're talking about flying foxes. All right, you guys, let's pause for just a second because I just said we were talking about bats and then I said we were talking about flying foxes. Well, today we are talking about bats. We're talking about a genus of very large bats and because they've got these large furry bodies, this long furry snout and even fox-like ears, they kind of look like flying foxes. So that's how they get their name. And like I said, these bats are pretty large. The largest species has a wingspan of well over four feet across. So no wonder they look like flying foxes. They're huge. And this genus of bats has about 60 species that are all pretty closely related. Flying foxes live along the eastern coast of Africa. They live along the southern portion of Asia and they live along the northern portion of Australia. In between all of these continents, they live on lots of little islands, so they have a pretty big range across many different countries and islands. Now, because they are bats, they do have quite a bit in common with other bats, so let's go ahead and start there. We're gonna discuss some similarities between flying foxes and other bats. Like all bats, Flying foxes are mammals, though they are kind of unique for mammals because bats are the only mammals that can truly fly. And even though that does make them a little bit unique, they do share lots of other traits with the rest of the mammals, such as they are covered in fur on their large bodies. They also have live offspring and their wings are very different than the wing of a bird. Their wings are kind of like modified arms and hands. And if you look at an x-ray of a bat's wing, it almost looks like they have five fingers that make up their wing. Like most bats, flying foxes are nocturnal, which means they're awake at nighttime. Because of this, they must have lots of adaptations to help them navigate in the dark. They've got exceptional eyesight, they've got a great sense of hearing and a great sense of smell that helps them fly around and find food in the darkness. Now, there are just a couple species that are known to be a little bit diurnal or awake during the day, but just a few of them. And these flying foxes live on islands that scientists have noticed don't really have many predators. And they think that might be why those couple species of flying foxes have adjusted the time of day when they're active. Something that makes flying foxes different than a lot of other species of bats is that they are typically frugivores, which means they like to eat fruit. Lots of flying foxes are also nectarivores, which means they like to drink nectar. And both of these diet items give flying foxes really important jobs in their environment. Let's start with the job of a frugivore. Most frugivores are not picky like we are. When they find a piece of fruit to eat, they just eat the seeds that are inside as well. And get, this gives them the very important job of being a seed disperser. As flying foxes eat those seeds and then they fly around the environment, they might even fly between islands, they drop seeds in their waste which helps spread new plants all around their ecosystem or maybe to islands that previously had not had those seeds. So because they are frugivores, they are important seed dispersers, but let's jump back over to the ones that are nectarivores that drink nectar because oftentimes nectarivores are really important pollinators. Pollinators move pollen between flowers of different plants and this is really important because without pollinators, many plants cannot produce seeds. And so now we know flying foxes are important for plants for two reasons. Not only are they pollinators, which helps plants make seeds, then they eat the fruit that the seeds are in and they travel around and they disperse seeds across the landscape. To find all of these fruits and flowers, 
Flying foxes rely on their really strong sense of smell. Now, many other bats use something called echolocation that allows them to navigate in the darkness and find food to eat, but flying foxes do not have echolocation. Echolocation is far more helpful for bats who eat insects, helps them find the insects flying around in the air. It's not so helpful for a bat that's trying to eat fruit or flowers. While flying foxes may go out and feed independently and some species are solitary, which means they like to live alone. Most flying foxes are what we call gregarious, which means they live in a really big social group with lots and lots of individuals, but there's not really any social structure. There's not a leader to the group. Everybody just kind of coexists. A group of bats, a group of flying foxes, is either called a colony or a camp. And for some species of flying foxes, there can be more than 100,000 bats in a single camp. Living in these really huge groups is very beneficial for flying foxes and actually lots of other animals because not only is there safety in numbers, which means if there's a predator around and you're in a really big group, you're less likely to be the one who gets gobbled up. There's also more mates available when you live in a big group. You don't have to go out searching for one. There's potential mates all around you. Once flying foxes find a mate, females typically have one offspring and provided there's enough food and resources around, they typically mate and reproduce every year. Now that one offspring is a lot of work for the mom flying fox. Females do most of the parental care. So for the first couple weeks of a flying fox's life, they cling to their mom's fur, they drink milk, they go everywhere with her. After about three to four months, they fledge. They start to develop the ability to fly. They gain a little bit of independence. They might stay with their mom for more than a year though, even once they develop the ability to fly and find food on their own. It's important that flying foxes are able to reproduce and keep their populations big and healthy because of those important jobs that we discussed before. If we lost flying foxes from their ecosystem, Plants would have a much harder time either developing seeds because there's less pollinators and they would definitely have a harder time spreading the plants around which would potentially make the forest not as healthy. There'd be fewer plants which would mean fewer animals. So flying foxes are super important. However, many species of flying foxes are faced with the risk of extinction because of something called human wildlife conflict. And that term means kind of exactly what it says. It's a conflict or a problem that we have when humans and wildlife live a little too close together. For flying foxes, their problem is primarily with farmers who are growing fruit crops. Flying foxes come over to these farms where there's lots of fruit available and they feast. The farmers, of course, don't like this because they've just spent all year growing those fruits and are going to rely on the sale of those fruits to earn their living. So to keep the flying foxes away, they often hunt them, and this is not good for the farmers or the foxes. Luckily, in many of the countries where flying foxes live, laws have been put into place saying you cannot hunt the flying foxes, and farmers have started to come up with new strategies to protect their crops from flying foxes. By reducing the conflict between wildlife and humans, we can protect both what the humans are trying to grow and do and the wildlife. All right, you guys, that was a very large amount of information about a very large group of bats, but I hope you guys enjoyed learning all about these incredibly important flying foxes. If you would like to test your knowledge with quizzes, activities, projects, and so much more, be sure to click the link below to head to our website, and I hope we see you guys next time to learn more about some incredible animals. Thank you.